Kia ora Year 12 and Year 13. This is the first video I'm going to make in a new playlist called Building Blocks for Scholarship Calculus. What I'm going to do is take some ideas that come up at Level 3 that you might find useful when you're solving scholarship calculus problems. Often the hardest part of Skull Calc is figuring out where to attack the problem, and if you've got some of these ideas at the front of your brain, it's easier to see where to start. So there are two that I'm going to look at in this video, and both of them are about complex numbers in their polar form. So really quickly, just to review what polar form is, um, as usual with bad drawings, if we've got a complex number z, we can write it in rectangular form, or we can write it in this form, um, r cis theta. Now cis in maths means cos of theta plus i sine theta. And geometrically what this means is that we can write this complex number z as having a modulus of r and an argument of theta. And what we're going to look at here is what happens if we add cis theta plus cis of negative theta. And I'm assuming here that my modulus is just 1. And down here we've got z equals cis of negative theta. So if you were doing a level 3 question, you'd probably be asked to do something like this. Prove that cis theta plus cis of negative theta equals 2 cos theta. And we're going to do that now. But if you were doing a scholarship problem, you might come to a point where you had this hidden in a big messy answer. And if you know that that can simplify into just 2 cos theta, which is um, a real number, not a complex number, that might help you. Similarly, we're going to look at cis theta times cis of negative theta, and we're going to prove that that equals 1. And again, if you have that inside a difficult problem, that can make life better. Okay, so let's do the proof of this one. So we'll start, as usual, by writing out the left-hand side. So cis theta plus cis of negative theta is equal to, right, all I'm going to do is expand out cis into cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos of negative theta plus i sine of negative theta. Right, now the big idea in here is odd and even functions. So cos of theta is equal to cos of negative theta because cos of theta is even. So an even function is one that can be reflected in the x-axis. Okay, so here's cos of theta, and here's cos of negative theta, and they're equal. Sine theta is an odd function. All right, so here's theta here, sine of theta is up here, sine of negative theta is its negative. So we can say that sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine theta since sine theta is odd. So that means when I go back up here, I can simplify my right-hand side. So it equals cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos theta minus i sine theta. Right, so by using the properties of odd and even functions, we've shown that the left-hand side is equal to 2 cos theta, which is the right-hand side, side as required. Okay, so let's go over what we've found again. We've proved, or proven, that this can be simplified to 2 cos theta. Okay, so we've gone from two complex numbers to one real number. The next one we're going to do is similar. We're going to prove that cis theta times cis negative theta equals 1. So let's start with the left-hand side. What have we got? Well, cis theta times cis of negative theta can be expanded like this.
whoops, plus, whoop, made a mistake there, just a sec. Oh, I'm going too fast. So if we put back in negative theta, we've got cos of negative theta plus I sine of negative theta. Now, again, we know that cos of negative theta is the same as cos of theta. All right, we want to justify why we've done that. So we need to say since cos theta equals cos negative theta and sine of negative theta equals negative sine of theta. Now I've got a quadratic. I'm going to expand the quadratic. So I've got cos squared theta plus i sine theta cos theta minus i sine theta cos theta. And lastly, I've got minus i squared sine squared theta. You can see that those two middle terms disappear. And that leaves me with cos squared theta plus sine squared theta because i squared is equal to negative 1, which is equal to 1 as required. So there you go. Again, if you're in the middle of a really difficult problem and you suddenly have cis theta times cis of negative theta, you, can, you don't have to do that proof all over again. Um, you can just state that that is equal to 1. So it comes in really handy. Thanks for watching. I'll do some more scholarship problems that use those two facts later on this week.